definitely going to be, you know, some people who are going to be having a hard time dealing with our previous singer not being there. But, you know, those are the things that happen. You just got to, you know, put one foot ahead of the other and just move forward. And that's pretty much what I've been doing. Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes back in our old friend Dino Cazares of Fear Factory and several other bands. How are you doing, pal? I'm doing great, man. I've been uh, doing this press for the new record that just came out today called Recoded, remix Word. of Aggression Continuum. Word. Happy record release day. It's very rare that we actually talk to an artist on record release day, so this is cool for me also. Thank you. I know. Usually it's like, you know, you talk uh, months before, right? But uh, <clears throat> this one just, you know... It happened this way, so I'm cool. Well, you have been busy as shit. Uh, yes, <laughs> seriously, yes. very busy touring, a lot of news, you know, in the studio, I'm sure rehearsing, all kinds of stuff going on in your life. So uh, congrats on a killer year. We talked last year, so you predicted some of this. And, uh, yes. you know, just all the best success to you, man. I, I'm so thrilled for you. Thank, and, thank you very and, much. And let me not, I don't want to... Uh, Take attention away from today's release, but also shout out on the uh, amazing job of uh, Roadrunner United as well, because I'm so proud oh, yeah. of that. It's the 20 year anniversary. Amazing. Just amazing. And just reminded me how great that whole thing was and how, how important to that you were as well. So it amazing. Was definitely fun collaborating, collaborating with all the different artists that I chose. Right. Oh, so yeah, so good. And it only reminded me to serve to remind me to go back and listen to the record again and really, you know, like sit with that record again at the time. You know, we did a big review of it here and we chatted about it. And uh, it really holds up, man. It really stands along with anything Fear Factory has ever done, uh, which is the job of a good remix record to me. Shouldn't be to, you know, if it happens to break out and get, you know, loved and acknowledged, that's wonderful. But it should just serve to highlight how great the original was. Yes, of course. Uh, you know, the remixes for us has always been like an extension of what the album is like. Indeed. I don't know when you sleep. You you are one of the hardest working I'm, people. I'm actually tired right now. You know, it's like, you know, I, I got up really early this morning and started doing interviews around the world. And uh, it's been amazing. But uh, yeah, I didn't even go to bed till like about, you know, three o'clock in the morning. Um, I started pre-production on the new Fear Factory record. That'll be out sometime next year. Um, we got a lot of stuff going on. Um, we got the Fear Factory Static X happening, uh, tour happening the next February coming up. Going to have to get ready for all that. Uh, but the main thing right now is doing pre-production for a new Fear Factory album. That is amazing. I'm so stoked. That's going to be one of the highlights of next year for sure. Right at the top of the anticipated list. And, uh, you know, obviously we're not you're not ready to make an announcement yet for Fear Factory and the singer, but clearly you're going to have to hit the studio and start rehearsing at some point. Do you foresee any additional time more than you normally would with the news vocalist or just going to do things business as usual for Dino? Well, you know, just even uh, well, when I was working with him, um, uh, he, you know, nailed 20 songs of the Fear Factory catalog, you know, just right off the bat, boom. So I think rehearsals are going to go very smoothly when we start doing those next year for the tour. Amazing. That's so exciting. I can't wait for this announcement. I can't wait for that tour. Uh, anybody who has seen the Static X tours in the last few years, they killed it. They did such a great job. I am yep. so proud. I'm yep. proud of those guys. We have a interview with Tony also on the channel. So, you know, we <laughs> love, love Tony. Love Tony. Love, one of my best friends. Dude, guys. just Great dude amazing if he wasn't already super talented he's just an amazing person a little bit that i've got to know him yeah uh, he's going to be doing double duty on that tour by the way he's going to be playing fear factory and static x so you know kudos <laughs> to him man you're going to get the massage therapist out for that for that wrist yeah. man he's going to need it i mean uh, we've, we've both done it before with us you know in fear factory or my divine heresy in fear factory you know he's he's done double duty before with soulfly asesino so he's done it before Maybe you will do it again with the uh, Divine Heresy news about Lauren Hart joining and new music there eventually coming out. I'm sure Fear Factory is the priority, but it would be amazing in the future if that happened yeah. also. Or maybe we got asked we got asked to do Hell and Heaven Fest next year with all three of my bands, <laughs> which is a which is a festival that happens in in Mexico. Right. Um, yeah, with Divine Heresy, Asesino, and Fear Factory. So we'll see if that works out. That's crazy. And you've had like an Asesino uh, release also in the works for quite a while, too. Oof, yeah. <laughs> right now, you know, it's like the priority has been Fear Factory for me, getting that going. I mean, it took us all, took us a while to find a new singer. It took me over a year to find a guy. And, uh, you know, of course, it's going to take some time because, 
it's it's kind of like a unknown person and i i don't i didn't know him either so there's a there's a there's a break-in period where you got to try to get to know people and get to know the artists that you're going to be working with and a, a guy you're going to be pretty much living with on a bus so you want to make sure that everything works out he gets along you know with with everybody and uh just how that works out right on and you've been you know i know the fans are impatient but you've done a very good job in my opinion and you always do on socials uh, just kind of hey chill out give it time you're going to be rewarded later relax you know the fans are just hungry man which is great it says a lot of things about the last album and you and how you've managed you know the le the this era of fear factory really well but the fans are like so greedy yeah. I'm very, I'm very vocal on, you know, my Twitter and my Instagram accounts and stuff like that. I'm very vocal there. And I definitely like to try to, you know, uh, give as much information to the fans as, as possible. But, you know, obviously, you know, there's, there's some of those knuckleheads that just get a little crazy on there, but uh, it's, uh, you know, it all comes from the same place of passion. You know, they, they passionately want the music. They want to hear all the new stuff. I think my problem is, is maybe I might give up too much information too soon. Because you know, I could be talking about stuff that could be happen that not that won't even be happening until a year from now. You know what I mean? Like for instance, we're starting a pre-production for the new Fear Factory record. It's just in the early writing stages, right? And just doing demos with it. But people, someone's gonna hear this and be like, "Yo, what's up with that new stuff? When's it coming out? What the fuck? Where's it at?" Well, but we were talking about it. You know, just, you know, you know. But it's gonna take some time. You know, we're also. Uh, label us at the moment we don't have any record label uh, we're exploring options and we're talking to a, a few different labels and so we're going to see which one, what's the best way to go all right good to know and best of luck with that can always be a jungle but you know surely i imagine the demand would be high after just you know what you guys have proven with the last few years that's going to be yeah. amazing you know with with every you know every release you know when there's a when there's a member change or when you know, somebody leaves the band and stuff like that. There's always going to be challenges, you know what I mean? Because people are so in love with everybody in the band. And that's that's cool, I understand. But, you know, sometimes, you know, people uh, people's lives change. People want to get into different stuff. People want to do different things. And, you know, people come and go in bands and it's just it just happens. And that's how it goes. So I definitely do have some challenges, you know, with with with, you know, introducing the new singer to the world and you know, li listening to the new tracks, there's definitely going to be, you know, some people who are going to be having a hard time dealing with our previous singer not being there. But, you know, those are the things that happen. You just got to, you know, put one foot ahead of the other and just move forward. And that's pretty much what I've been doing. Hey, you know what? For every uh, Ozzy, there is a Dio. So, you know what? Ooh, it's going to be was amazing. It's, it, you know, word. And I highly recommend anybody go check out that uh, new documentary about him uh they i haven't got to see job. it yet I yeah, they did, it. it's uh it's hitting on demand soon they did a beautiful job i got to see it in the movies it was like one day and i hustled but yeah man it's it's a tough position but we've we've covered that ground before moving on moving forward and super excited whenever that announcement is surely before february we will be welcoming it and share the news we're super pumped for you and if, oh, I, yeah. I mean, if they if they got the dino seal approval that should be enough right yes uh this is nothing new for me i mean i've been in bands where I've uh, played with many different singers and, you know, I've collaborated with a bunch of different people and, uh, and I've had singer changes in my band, Divine Heresy. So I know firsthand what it's like, you know what I mean? Exactly. Let us get into a quick track by track of Recoded, just to talk about the collaborators and how you chose them and anything else you want to share about the track. We will breeze through this, I promise. The remix album kicks off with Adapt or Die. <laughs> Featuring Jake Stern and sound effects by Zardonic, who's a genius, by the way. <laughs> yes, Zard Zardonic is definitely the one of the highlights on the record. He, um, you know, he came out of. Uh, uh, he's actually from Argentina, I believe, uh, but he lives in Germany, so he's been there for a while. And uh, I've been, I've been following his career for a few years now. Um, but Jake Stern is a friend of mine. He's a huge Fear Factory fan. And he just has this voice. He has this voice. It's really good. I used him for the intro to Recoded. And I also used him for the intro to uh, Aggression Continuum as well. So he does the intros to the albums. As you know, some of you know, the intro to the album are spoken word. And it's basically the introduction or it's the beginning of the story of, of the albums. You know what I mean? And Recoded 
the intro is pretty much saying that, you know, everything has been reworked, redone, you know, recoded. And we're basically saying adapt or die. In other words, you know, you got to adapt or die was kind of like you have to, you know, obviously you have to go with the times and, you know, and this is kind of more along the lines of, you know, of the concept of, you know, moving forward with new technology, with new change, you know what I mean? And that's kind of like where that intro came from, um, you know, going way back to when we were, you know, doing the early stages of Fear Factory and a lot of the, the backlashes that we were getting from adding different elements of music into our style, you know, especially with the clean vocals and then doing industrial techno remixes way back in 1992, 1993, we got a lot of backlash for it because people weren't really adjusted to the change like that into those different elements com being combined. And, you know, I'm not saying that we were pioneers, but we were definitely, you know, some of the earlier bands that were experimenting with it in, in, in an extreme way, you know, especially introducing that stuff to a newer audience, you know, more metal audience, introducing those styles, you know, it was just, um, you know, people were just weren't having it at the time, but eventually they grew into it and they started liking it. And so they've adapted to what we were doing. And that was kind of like a play on what, where we started. You know I mean? You gotta like, you gotta adapt or die. You know, you, you gotta flow with the changes. And that's pretty much how that intro starts. starts. And then it goes into the Reese Fulber track, which is Monolith. It's a Monolith remix, uh, Hatred Will Prevail. And that was, um, Reese, Reese has been putting out a lot of his own records lately. And it's very much, in my opinion, it seems like it's very much Berlin, Germany-esque, hard industrial stuff, dark stuff, you know what I mean? And so when we were going into this track, he was like, I'm going to bring some of those elements into it. And so that's pretty, pretty much what he did. Of course, he added the guitars and the heavy vocals and the melodic vocals and it worked out great. And Reese pretty much used, if you notice like in the midsection, it's like, the solo, the solo kind of looped, a piece of it looped, and then another piece of the rhythm in the background, and then Bert's vocals kind of like on a weird loop. That's just basically him taking the elements that we have and creating something new with just the basic elements of guitar and guitar vocals, you know, a couple of guitar tracks and vocals, you know what I mean, and making it sound cool. And that's, that's the creative way of Reese likes to work. And it's always amazing to see what he could just do with you know, with the guitars, whether it's filtering them or whether it's chopping them up, making them sound certain ways, you know what I mean? Or looping them, you know, he's always been really creative in that way. And it's always been something that he was always able to bring into Fear Factory. So that's kind of like the more, you know, introduction to the more German hardcore, you know, techno stuff, industrial techno stuff that's been going on. And then, uh, you know, going into Disruptor Remix, Disobey by DJ, DJ Zardonic. That track is probably the closest that you're going to hear to the actual song. Um, and that was kind of purposely done. Uh, we just kind of wanted to keep that one in some ways, I'm not going to say basic, but we wanted just to make, to keep, keep the elements of the song pretty much intact, but just add more of a, a dancier beat, a groovier beat, right? And so that was our approach on that song. And then it goes into... Uh, what's the next track? Um, I am the Night Rider. Okay, that's that's a that's the, the the song originally is called Fuel Injected Suicide Machine, and that's the concept about the first Mad Max movie about the Night Rider, and that's like the the first thing you see in the movie is the Night Rider, just terrorizing you know the community. Um, so we obviously took a lot of you know sound bites from that record from that movie. And we added more of it into the remix. So you can kind of see what it was more about the concept. So that one also was done by Zardonic and um, this guy named Giuseppe Abassi who calls himself Dualized Dysfunction or just Dualized. And he is based out of Italy and him and Zardonic collaborated on that track. The first time I heard it, I was like, wow, I was blown away. And I was like, you know, and then we actually ended up 
moving some elements around just to make it work even flow even cooler. And so that was really cool. That, that, that was my part. My part was pretty much helping with the arrangements and making them sound, you know, different than what these guys do. Now, one of the things that I also found out is that a lot of these DJs, when they do remixes, they like to make everything like five to six minutes long. Even though the song might be only three and a half minutes, they like to make them longer for some reason. That's something that I found out. So this is, this is an amazing track. It's got the killer riff. One of the cool things that Giuseppe and Zardonic did is they ended up using the midsection melodic vocals as the main chorus of the track. So it really highlights those vocals on that part. So the actual chorus from, from the actual song, from the real song, doesn't come till later. You know what I mean? So the, it's, it's like a different chorus. So it's kind of like a whole new, whole new vibe, a whole new track. And it just sounds amazing. And then going into Path to Salvation, which is the Purity remix, that was something that uh, uh, Reese was thinking of like club, kind of like gothy, cyberpunk, kind of, um, you know, a remix, industrial, um, because, you know, Reese worked on that soundtrack for the cyberpunk video game. And so he kind of brought some of those elements into that track. And it just sounds killer. And there's like, there's actually, it's, it's, it's one of the tracks that doesn't have that much guitar in it and um, has a little bit of it in there. But, you know, it's, again, it's, it's one of those tracks that I can hear at a club, you know what I mean? Goth club or industrial dance club. I can totally hear that track. And, uh, and he was very successful in exactly achieving that goal. Now, this, this track pretty much, this next track pretty much stands out. It's Worthless, which is the End of Line remix. And that was done by Zardonic. And now, Zardonic is mainly known for drum and bass, right? And when I talked to him, I said, look, we've got a lot of this, you know, heavy stuff, you know, a lot of guitar driven stuff on this, on this record, but we don't have anything in a synth wave type of, type of style. So I reached out to some other people uh, called Turbo Slash, and they worked on a track for me, but it, 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 did, it didn't come out like how I pictured Worthless to be. So they did, they did a different song for me. Um, but when I reached out to Zardonic and I said, look, you got to like do something in a synthwave style. And he's like, oh man, that's not my style, you know, because I'm more drum and bass. I'm like, I'm like, I know you can do it. He goes, you know what? I'm going to give it a stab. I'm going to work on it. And so I know he reached out to some of his um, synthwave buddies and, try to find out what kind of synthesizers they use for those, what kind of sounds they use. And so when he worked on it, he, saw, he sent me an early version. I'm like, I see where this is going. This is gonna be amazing. And so he had all the elements, he had all the parts. And I said, you know what? Take out any guitars. I don't want no guitars on the song, right? And I want it to be a little less vocals and mainly focused on the synths. And so that's what he did. And then we worked on the structure and boom, it came out amazing. To me, it's like one of the standout tracks on the actual record because it's a really far departure of what the original song is. Definitely my favorite along with Path, for sure, those two for me. Yeah. But yeah. And then there's this one guy out of, based out of Toronto, Canada. His name, well, he goes by Tyrant of Death. Now, if anybody is familiar with this stuff, he is he's creates some amazing shit. And I've been following him now for a few years and I don't know how many records he put out. He's put out like 10 records uh, in, and he's just, he's got this crazy industrial futuristic uh, everything from, you know, black metal to industrial to you name it. He's done it all. And it's like, you got to check him out. Tyrant of death. Now I sent him collapse because he likes the more heavier down to eight string stuff. And so I sent him that song collapse. And I didn't think, I didn't think it could get any heavier, right? I didn't think that song could get any heavier because it's pretty heavy on the record. It's probably the heaviest track on the record on the regular Aggression Continuum album. But when I sent them the track, it just came out even heavier than that. And I was like, wow, it was just, and it was just amazing. And um, that track is called Empire's Fall. So that one's, that one's killer. And I guess check, check them out, Tyrant of Death. Then System Assassin going back to a Reese Fulber track. That's very much a Reese Fulber type of track, industrial, 
uh, you know, just heavy guitars, heavy vocals, and just doing some crazy shit. So it came out good. Um, and then um, let's go. We go to hypocr Hypocrisy of Faith, which is Manufactured Hope Remix. And that's Rob G. Now, Rob G, I've known him for a little bit of time. And I've, uh, my manager knew him really well. They're, they're, they're New York buddies. Um, and Rob G is really much into the hardcore um, GABA stuff that's like, you know, based out of mainly Holland and stuff like that. And so I was like, oh, I got to get some of this, this style on the record. You know what I mean? So he did Manufacture Hope and he did a song called Hypocrisy of Faith. And he definitely brought his style into this, into this track. And it kind of like is a little bit of a throwback to like what we were doing on Remanufacture back in 1997 and, you know, all the GABA hardcore out there in, in the Holland and stuff like that. So it, it was killer. So I'm glad it worked out that way. And, it, it was definitely a, a, one of the standout tracks as well for me. And then going into This Is My Life, Cognitive Dissidence Remix, that is another Zardonic, and he's, he's best at that drum and bass, and that track is all, you know, drum and bass. So it has that, that beat, and it just fit really well with this track, and uh, it's, it's, it's fucking badass. Then we're going into re Recoded, which is the title track. Now, this is Blush Response. His name's Joey. He's been working with us uh, for quite some time now, adding some keyboards on the records here and there. You probably didn't hear a lot about him, you know, with the Fear Factory, but he's done some remixes stuff for us as well. Like when we do, like you know, special Digipack releases, we 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 do like a remix here and there. Um, so he's been working with the band for a while. He really understands the style. And he also is, you know, part of that, you know, dark industrial heavy, you know, scene. And so he definitely brought those elements into this record. This, to me, this is probably the darkest and the heaviest track on the whole record. And it's just, it's that kick drum is pumping hardcore. And I just, I love it. It fits well with the track. You know, we added some more guitars to that track and it just sounds killer. Right on. Do we want to quickly talk about the bonus tracks, which are also on the vinyl? Yep. So the bonus tracks <clears throat> is uh, one of them is Turbo Slash. Again, they're part of the synth wave. Now they also had did. It's 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 a. You're only going to get that those two tracks on the vinyl. That's not a digital release at all. And um, yeah, so Turbo Factory. I'm sorry, Turbo Slash, which I named the song Turbo Factory because. Um, you know, it's got all the, the, the trippy ass Fear Factory elements, especially with the vocals. Uh, you probably haven't even heard the track yet, have you? I have not. <clears throat> it's a cool track. It's very, definitely also, they, they pitched Bert's vocals down and it sounds fucking trippy as fuck, but it's got that synth wave style too. But it's, it's really, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty fast track. Definitely a cool bonus track to have on the vinyl. Then the, then the last one is another Disruptor remix that was done by... Reese Fulber, and that's classic industrial Reese Fulber, classic. And that's like, you know, we, I just wanted to save, save something special for the vinyl, and I wanted to put those two tracks on there. Word. I, I can't wait to hear those after having heard this record a few times all the way through. Thank you for sharing all that and, you know, deepening this experience. Not only was it, a, a, you know, an analysis, but it was also an education, right? Because we're getting a little discussion of all the little different subgenres of the subgenre. Yeah, exactly. Of a subgenre. It's like the Russian nesting doll, Matryoshka, a little open, yeah. open the so doll. I, I, I pretty much picked all these guys because, one, mm. you know, obviously Reese, you know, that, that, that's the obvious choice. He's been working with the band forever. Um, you know, Sardonic was a guy who I wanted to work with, you know, for a while now. And I always saw, saw me collabor collaborating with him as well. Uh, dualized, you know, he's a guy that's done some keyboard stuff for Fear Factory for the last few records, um, last couple records actually. And then, um, um, you know, Rob G, I've known him for a while and just getting to do some Gabba hardcore remixes was perfect. Tyrant of Death, that guy is, is, is got some amazing stuff and I just wanted to, always wanted to work with him. I think he is, out of everybody, he's probably the closest to Fear Factory style than any of the other artists. And Blush Response, you know, 
he, you know, like I said, he's been working with the band for a while as well, uh, contributing to some keyboard stuff on, on, the, on the albums. But you got to check out all these tracks um, and go follow these guys on their Instagram. And, you know, talk to them, tell them how much you like the record and like what, what, what they've done. And they'll, they'll talk to you and they'll tell you like all the different elements that they used, you know, all the different, you know, programs or, you know, hardware that they use on this, on this record. So give them a shout. Word. Uh, any, any final thoughts you want to share about uh, all the upcoming things? Yes. Well, first I want to say thank you for, you know, giving me this platform and this time to talk about the new record, you know, a big shout out to all the DJs that, you know, worked on this record uh, recoded with me and, Thanks to all the fans who've been supporting Fear Factory all these years since, you know, way back when we started in 1990. And uh, it's going to be a lot of things to come next year, in the future, a lot of touring, new, new music, new singer. And just, you know, again, thank you for everything. And I'll see everybody out there on the road. All right, Dino Cazares, always a pleasure, brother. And uh, we'll see you out there soon. I can't wait for next year. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for hanging with Ghost Cult. We'll see you soon. Later.